Okay, it's ready? It's started? It's on. Okay. Chodesh Tov, Aguten Chodesh, Chodesh Ada. Okay, we're here in Nun Gimel Amud Beis on the top. Ve'eim evorchen al ner ad she yeoistu. What does that mean? David, would you mind passing me that? Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You don't make a bracha on the ner until you have pleasure from the light. It doesn't mean you have to actually benefit from the light. <coughs> as long as the people surrounding it would benefit from the light. And you're far away, you can't benefit from the light. But you see the light, you can already make the bore me'ore ha'ish. Okay? So the light is large enough to give benefit. For who? For the people that are right around it. But you could be far away, as long as you see the light. And you, you're not getting any benefit. Someone had a lamp hidden in his lap, or a lantern, or he sees a fire, but he <coughs> but he can't use the, its light. On we're using its light to the rush, I'll have it, but he can't see the actual flame. You can only make a bracha if you see the fire. You need two things, and you benefit. So the Gemara says, I can understand the, the, the case in the Brighton that says, you're benefiting from the light, but you don't see the, the, the fire. How could that be? Because it's behind a blind spot, a, a corner, which means either it's behind the wall, on the other corner, or inside a lantern, but there are little holes, and you only get the light out of it, but you don't actually see the flame. Fine. So that's not good enough, because you don't see the flame. How could you see the fire and not benefit? Lav de Merachka. Must be, it's talking about that you're far away. Ah! And it says clearly that you can't make the bracha. Why? Didn't we just say that you could be far away? As long as the people around it are benefiting. So the Gemara says, no, that's not a kasha. Look, you go to Ami Va'azla. It's talking about you're right near it. But even the people that are right near it, they can't really benefit because it's going on and off. It's very, very... You know, as the fire gets really weak, when it's about to die out, it goes like low, higher, lower, higher. So at that point, you can't really benefit from the light, even if you're around. That's what the Brighton was talking about. But in a case where it was a good light, light, it's just that you're far away, as long as people near it would be able to benefit, that's good enough. Tanu Rabbanan. Rabbanan taught, Gechalim lochashot, glowing coals. Since they give off light, they're made just to give off a glow and a light. Omemot, but if they're dying out, they're like, uh, basically, they're going out. What would that be in English? That would be, um, they're still lit, but they're, uh, they're being extinguished. They're, they're going out slowly. So they're not really giving off enough light anymore. What does that mean? If you put in a, a thin piece of wood, a wood chip or a splinter, and then it would light up from itself, that's enough glow and light for you to make a bracha. They asked, Omemot or Omemot? Is it Omemot or Omemot? Is it Ayin or an Aleph? How do you spell it? Which means um, the weakening of the shine. And over there it says Amamu with an iron. Okay. Rava says, no, 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 no. When it says in the Mishnah, 
um, that you have to have benefit. It doesn't mean that the people around it have to have benefit. And the size of the fire has to be large enough for those people to have benefit. And you could be far away as long as you see the fire. No. It means you yourself have to be close enough to actually benefit. The Kama, how close? So a Pundion was, was two Easter. So it was probably double the size. In some way, I don't know if it was double in width or a little bit wider and a little thicker, but it was larger. So if you can tell the difference between uh, if you can tell the difference between the uh, larger coin and the smaller coin, that is how close you have to be for you to benefit from the light. By the way, that's what we do today. We look at our nails, Bishat Bracha, to differentiate between our nails and the skin next to the nails. <coughs> That's what we're, we're demonstrating the same thing, that we can tell the difference between one thing and the other, like the two coins. By the way, there's somebody named Barab Shol Shimon Deutsch. We have to move. Yes, I'll just tell you quickly. He has gathered tens of thousands of artifacts from shipwrecks. The most fascinating... He's made museums. You ever heard of the... Uh, what is it called again? The, the Jewish Museum, um, to, to, Living Torah Museum, in Borough Park and in the mountains. Um, millions of dollars he spent on gathering artifacts and from the Torah. It could be anything from a wheel to a whip in Mitzrayim to a basket to an, an animal, uh, you know, the, uh, the skin of an animal, of what animals, all the sheets of what animals are. And he has an instant and a pundion. And he said, now we know what an Isra and a Punyan is. Now we know the difference and how much light you need. And he went to Rabbi Yasha. Rabbi Yasha gave him many askomas that you, if you find the actual things you could pass in from them. He found a litra, which is a weight that the Gemara brings down a lot of times. It's a Greek weight and it's made out of lead and lead does not corrode. It doesn't matter how many years it's in the salt water, in the ocean. So he got a litra. There's a machlekes Rashi and Rambam. How many ounces it is exactly. Rashi says 360. I forgot what he says exactly. The Ramam says something else. He weighed it. Rashi, bullseye. Exactly. Rabbi Yashif said we pass it like Rashi now. Even if the Achrein and Paschal like the Ram, we have stuff like the Raisa. We have a Raya. You have a clear Raya. And Rashi didn't have a litra. <laughs> Instead, this is a for the times of Chazal. He found a ship wrecked it said on it in Greek, I saw it. Litra in Greek. Amazing. Anyways, he has a lot of fascinating things. Maybe one that comes to Florida. He does things for the kids and for the high schools here. It's, it's fascinating. You should bring him here to the Beta Knesset. Anyways, to the Lighthouse Project for sure. Yeah. What? Came to Rabbi Zwag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He also he found the. He found a, a, a dinner, dinner Zohov. The Gemara says that the thickness of the gold on the Mizbech HaPnimi, Mizbech HaKteris, the little Mizbech inside, which they broke HaKteris, was as thick a coating as a dinner Zohov. And it says that it was a great miracle that it didn't burn. Like, why is it such a big miracle? Maybe it's a thick coin, whatever. So he says, now you know the miracle. He showed, I was holding a dinner. It's so thin, it's thinner than like a dime. He says, now you understand the Gemara. You can understand Gemara. So you have it in front of you. Okay. Amazing. Which are different types of weights. Uh, the Meluzma of Dferi and Meluzma of Tzipari were a little bit different. He didn't have a fire. So he used to like, look at the neighbor's fire. Now the neighbor, this neighbor, the Be'ada Dalyala, he didn't live close to Rav Yehuda. He lived far away. He lived, like, let's, say, uh, let's just say, five houses away. So he looked at it, three, four houses away. He couldn't benefit from that light. He only saw the light. So Rav Yehuda was relying on his own shita, that you don't have to benefit, as long as the people next to it could benefit. But Rav, but Rav 
he was specific to make a bracha only on Guria Bachama's house. Guria Bachama's house was right next to him. So he was able to benefit. Now, now, we don't know if Baravua's house was near Abaya or far. We don't know if Abaya is saying, I go like Rav Yehuda or Rava. So, um, somebody showed him say, I don't know. Anyways, I am showing him. It's not clear from Rashi. Om Rav Yehuda, Om Rav. Eim mechazen ala ur mechazen ala mitzvahs. On Maitzu Shabbos, you don't have to go searching to make a bracha on the nair. Like you do for mitzvahs. Which means, if you do go to your neighbor, if you don't have a light, it's very nice. And if you knock on his door and you ask him for a light, it's very special and very, very uh, praiseworthy. But you don't have to, like as if you don't have a mitzvah. If you don't have a mitzvah, then you're mechuyiv to look after. Why not? Because um, it's a birchaz hanehenin. It's a birchaz hanehenin. Just like if you have a mitzvah brach of oyster master beracious. It's a shevach. Excuse me, did I say nenin? No, sorry, it's early. It's a birchaz shevach. It's not a birchaz hanehenin. It's not a brach of uh, enjoying. It's a brach of praise, like on the thunder, on the lightning. We're going to see in the next parak. So therefore, it's not a chi of mamish. If you have it, then you make it. At first, I used to go around looking for a light. Once I heard this, I, I don't go um, <coughs> searching. If I have it, I make it. Okay, the next part of the Mishnah said that if someone eats and he forgot to make Bikat Amazon, Beit Shammai says you have to go back to the place. Everybody holds it the best is to bless where you ate. But do you have to? Beit Shammai says, yeah, you have to. Beit Hillel says, you don't have to. Omer Azid v'yitem ravdimi baraba machloket b'shochach. Abba b'meizid divrei hakol yachzol imkoyme v'yivorech. Which means, I didn't forget and, and walk out and then remember later. I knew that I have to say Bekat HaMazon and I said, no, I'm not saying it now. I want to leave right now. I'll say it later. Then everybody agrees that you got to get back to your original place. We don't let you do that. So the Gemara says, Of course, it says that you forgot in the Mishnah. It doesn't say you did it on purpose. The Gemara says, I would have thought that the Mishnah means even if I did it on purpose. The reason why the Mishnah says that you forgot, to show you the Koach of Beit Shammai, that Beit Shammai says, that even if you forgot, you have to go back to bed. So therefore, Kamash Valan, um, Rav Zvid tells you that, no, the Mishnah means Shachach specifically. But Mezid, even Beit Hillel, is modern, you have to go back. Tanya, the Gemara brings down a beautiful brighter here between the Machloket, Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai. Omer lehem Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai. L'divreichem ishalcha b'rosh abira. V'shachach v'yarad v'lo birach. Yachzol l'rosh abira v'yivarech. Someone uh, ate or in the top of the a huge house. He got to stay because of Amazon. He went down. And he didn't make a bracha. Now he should go back to, all the way to the top of the house. Forget, I forgot his wallet up, all the way upstairs in the big mansion. He has to go up all, all the great flights. Ten flights to the top. Through different passageways. Is he not going to go get it? For his wallet, he's going to go back. Even though he's going to sweat through it. So the chavod atzma hu alech, chavod shemayim lo koshkin. For the kavod of himself, he goes. For the kavod of shemayim, he doesn't. Mm-hmm. The difference is that... Uh, he needs it. He needs this also. Kavod shemayim. I know, but you can do kavod shemayim still on the spot and still bless God at that moment. It's not like the wallet, I don't have it on me physically, but... But even if that's the case, if it still says, because let's say I was at a place, I left the house, or whatever it is, now I'm in my car. I stopped, boom, I'm going to do it right now. Oh, I forgot. Let me do it right now. I'm still saying it. It's not like I can't, you know, the wall's a physical object. I need to go back for it. I hear. Maybe that's what he still holds. The Shammai says, but it's still not fitting that you would give more kavod to the anarchy. Very good. 
אין חנות צריך תמיד אחד עובר בשוי כבי שמי, ואשכח אין לכם את האהבה. When this happened to the first one, and he forgot, he was machmed like Beit Shammai. You know what he found? He found a wallet full of golden coins. <coughs> what? I'm going back next time. <laughs> but, oh. oh, but you went back for the, he didn't go back for the coins. You're going back for the coins. It's a little different. I don't know what you're going to find there. If you go back for the coin, maybe you'll find a bencher. <laughs> he went back for the benches, so he found coins. Anyways, the, by the way, aren't we not allowed to be machmer like Beishamai? Like we remember, like lying down, Reb Tafen was machmer. They said, you would chive me. So you're not supposed to go like Beishamai. The answer is here, Beis Hill is moide, that if, you, if you're machmer like Beishamai, tova alecha brocha. Wow. Yeah, here, so that's what he did. Bechad ove b'meizid ki Beis Hillel. He actually went like Beis Hillel, that he didn't go back, but even b'meizid. Which we said before that Basil doesn't even hold like this. He took, he made up his own kula. For Achle Arya, a lion ate him up. Okay. So um, that's the end of that. Okay. Rabbi Babachana have a ka'azu Rabbi Babachana was traveling with a caravan. Ochal ve ishtuli. He ate, he forgot the velo barich. Forgot, he didn't make a berakat amazon. And they kept traveling. Omar, hechi evid, what should I do? Iman yaminilu in shayi levarech. If I tell them I forgot to make a bracha and I want to go back, I'm really brech kolech de mevarchet le rachmane bevarchet. Wherever you bless, you're always blessing Hashem. Where does Hashem exist? Everywhere. So they're going to tell me, just bless him here. It's not like he's not here. It's not like he doesn't hear you. Mutav da aminilu in shayi yonid de hava. It's better that I tell them I forgot a golden dove. Then they'll say, okay, fine. You know, we'll wait for you. Go back. Amaluhu, so he said to them, interlead the Anshayon and the Hava. Please wait for me. Because I forgot. Um, <coughs> to, we'll see why he's allowed to lie. He's allowed to lie for Begat Amazon. Okay? Now, he's not going to come back with a golden dove, right? So what, what is he going to tell them then? They'll believe him because they'll think, oh, he lost it. He went back and someone already took it. So he said, I forgot one. So he said, okay, well, wait. He went and he found a golden dove. So the Gemara says, Why did he say a dove? Because the Jews are compared to a yoyna. The Pasuk is speaking about the Galut of Kla Yisrael. Even though you are blackened by the Galut, you will be beautiful like the wings of a dove, which seem to be like beautiful and coated in silver. And the feathers shine like gold, like yellow gold. Meaning at the end of the day, you're going to look like a silver and golden dove. That's how you're going to look when Mashiach comes. Just like the Yona doesn't get saved, the only way she, she doesn't fight with her beak like all other birds, but she only fights with her wings and her feathers. The, whatever, the wings. So two, the wings of Klai Yisrael are the mitzvot. And therefore, when he said, when I go back to Vibikat Amazon, I'm going back for my Yonah, my golden dove, my mitzvah. And that's my fight. That's my, my, that's my, my protection. Shlokish, oh, excuse me. Ad amat, ad, uh, so the Gemara says, Ad emetahu. Till where does a person, um, till what time can a person still say Vibikat Amazon? So the Mishnah said before, turn back to the Mishnah, the Mishnah said, Ad she itakel mazom b'meyav. Mishnah said, Ad kedei she itakel ha mazom b'meyav. Until it gets digested. Okay. So the Gemara says, how long does it take for it to get digested? 
I'm going to be able to close man chain or as long as you're not hungry. Okay? As, as long as you're not hungry, you could still say because that means it's still digesting, it's still inside of you. As long as you're still thirsty because of what you ate. Say that. How much is the shear of equal? It, the time that it takes to walk, four million. A meal is 2,000 amas. Four million is 8,000 amas. An amma, according to the Chazanish, is two feet. So it would be 16,000 feet, which is about three miles. Three and a half miles. Something like that. Three miles, right? But so they say it's between 18 minutes, uh, 18 minutes and up a little bit. So, no, 18 minutes, sorry, 18 minutes is, is one mil. Four <laughs> mil will be 72 minutes, up to anywhere between 72, 90, or 96, the highest shit. So that's how much time you have. <coughs> that's a different shear. Before he said, as long as you're thirsty, this now he's telling you four million. What does he really say? Which means, Machlekes Rashi and Toysis. Rashi learns, if you ate a lot, you have four million. Okay, about 72 minutes. If you ate a little, then you have to still be thirsty. Toysis says just the opposite. If you eat a lot, it's as long as you're thirsty. You eat a little, it's 72 minutes. Now, most Paiskim don't bring this down. Um, the difference between eating a lot and a little. Do you know why? Because the difference is only in the, wor- in the world of Rav Shlokish. But we don't go like Rav Shlokish. We pass him like Rav Yechanan. And Rav Yechanan says, it doesn't matter how much you eat or not, as long as you are not hungry, you can still say Bekat Amazon. Balahem Yain. So even if you eat and two and a half hours later you're still not hungry, you can do Bekat Amazon. Right. Meikididina, yeah. But, bo, yeah. Volahem yain. Okay, so if you have one cup of wine, so Bichame says you make a bracha on the wine and then on the mazon. Bichame says you make it on the mazon and then, and then on the wine. Right? Because Bichame says that because our mazon doesn't need a cup. And therefore, you could drink the cup before Bekat Amazon, say Bekat Amazon without the cup. Beit Hillel says you need a cup, therefore, save it for, till, for, to, to say Bekat Amazon and then drink your wine. So the Gemara says, fine, that's, yeah. Yeah. With Zimun, right. And then the Mishnah said, you say Amen after Yisrael, but you don't say Amen after a Kuti. Until you hear the whole bracha, because maybe the kuti is making a bracha to the avodah zara. Could you press the on button? Is the on button on? Is the air conditioning on? It's on? You make it a little lower because it's a little warm in here. Thank you. So, the name of the Yisrael, Afagav de Lashama Kula Bracha Oine? Thank you. Is this to say that a Yisrael, even if he didn't hear the whole bracha, he could answer? Okay. Okay. So, <coughs> it seems like someone's being mighty you over here with a bracha. And it says, if he's a Jew, as long as you hear the end, you say Amen, and you're okay. So the Gemara says, how could you just say Amen to the end of the bracha and be Yotze, whatever he's trying to be mighty you with? No, it's not talking about he ate with them. Which means, he didn't eat with them. He's not trying to be yoytzei, anything with them. Any chova. He just wants to say amen. So the Mishra teaches us that he can say amen, even to the end of the bracha. Rav told his son, my son, 
always chaparain, like in Yiddish you say, grab. Always be careful to quickly go ahead and you be the one that does the benching for everyone and say, says Bekat Amazon. Avuna also told his son, Rabba, Chatoi Fubarech. Okay? When they're, they're, when they're giving out the cost of Bekat Amazon, you take it and you are more to everybody else. Because the schut of making the bracha is greater according to these two Amaroyim than the schut of saying Amen. So the Gemara says, the memory of the Mivarach, Adif Yimanda Ani Amin. Is this to say that it's great to be Mivarach than to say Amin Vahatani? We learned in a Brighter. Rabbi Yossi Yomir Kodol, Haone Amen, Yotem and Amivarech. It's greater to say Amen more than to actually say the Bracha. Amadir Rabbi Yoroi, Hashomayim. I swear by the heavens, Kenu, that it's so. Taden, I'll prove it to you. Shaharei Gul Yorin, the simple. Uh, privates, you know, the, the simple soldiers, they start the war and they fight. They're at the front of the battle. And the mighty warriors, they wait for the end of the battle to come in and finish, sh- sh- finish it off. So therefore, whoever finishes off the bracha, which is the people that say Amen, they're much mightier. Okay? Because the, the mitzvah goes by the end. They, they, they you know, they, they, are, they, are, they confirm. They affirm the truth. Amen. What you just said is right. They're the warriors. Tanoim. So the Gemara says, it's good kasha, but it's machalik, it's tanoim. That, that's why these Amarayim were going like the other tanoim. <coughs> the Tanya. Because we went to Nebraita. Echad ha-mevarech ve'echad ha-one amen b'mashma. There's a pasuk in Nechemya, Rashi brings down. Kumu. Then it says, Get up, bless Hashem, your Hashem, from, from one world to the other, and bless Shem Kivodecha. So, meaning, the first part is talking about the Bracha, and the second part is talking about the Amen. So, it does, the, the, the Pasuk is mentioning both to be very great. However, but they, qui- they, they give schar more, quicker, in Shemayim, to the Mavarech more than the one that says Amen. Okay? So you see here that there's another brighter that, of Tanoim that holds that the Mavarech is greater. So, Shmuel asked of Rav, When children are saying a bracha, could you say amen? You say amen to everything besides the little children by the Rebbe because they're learning how to make brachot. Okay? So they're not really trying to make brachot, they're just learning the brachot to not learn how to make them, they're being trained. That's only when they're not reading the Haftorah. But when they're making a bracha on the Torah and the Haftorah, which they're allowed to do for Maftir and Haftorah, there we say Amen, because they want to make a bracha. Okay? Um, by the way, little, really, really little children that don't even know what they're saying, so the Mishnah Buru says not, not to say Amen, the stipler understood that Mishnah Buru to mean that you don't have to say amen, but you could. And he would say amen to teach the children to say amen. Rabbi Shalom is Alman Arbach, actually, but however, he learns the Mishabura more like the way most people understand it, that you should not say amen. And he would say amen, like something like that. So it shouldn't actually be a real amen. Tonu Rabbonu. Shemen me'ak v'ta bracha. What's the reason why a person wouldn't verse says amen? He gets more scarred. A lot more energy involved than you know when it initiates the bracha. It does more the work. All you gotta do is say amen. Because without the ending, the bracha is lacking. So, so the gemiras mitzvah, the ending of the mitzvah, is really what really solidifies the mitzvah. That's one pshat. There's another pshat of a mashah in stoyta. I'll show it to you after it. Bezus Hashem, if we have time. Okay. So if nobody says amen. 
not, it's a little bit incomplete. Meaning, it's not the Zoya rights, the Zoya rights, if you want to really know what it's like. Yeah. I think he writes that, uh, that it's like getting a letter and not opening it up. And that's why Reb Chaim Velozhener, Vilnagoyim's greatest Talmud, was very, very makbid to never to say a bracha ever without someone saying amen. And one time he was in the middle of learning through the night and he was very thirsty. I guess he usually didn't, either his wife was up or there was someone else there or he usually didn't drink at night. But for some reason, he didn't have this problem every night. But one night he had this issue. There was no one there. So he just had the water. He didn't make the bracha. And right then, he had a knock on the door. One of his Talmidim walked in, asked him to explain him something in the sugya. So he explained everything in the sugya, and then he said the bracha. Okay, beautiful story. He had, you know, Hashem said to him. The next day, he went over to his Talmud, and he was talking to him. He said, thank you for coming last night. To talk to me and learning and to say amen. He said, I don't know what you're talking I never came to you last night. <laughs> it's a famous maestro, the Rechaim Velozhenah. The Bacha had no recollection. The Bacha woke I don't know what it is. Weiter. Let's go weiter. Turn up on a Shem and Ma'akiv Tabrocha. The oil that they would smear on their hands. Yeah, so it's, anyways, what that, the, Rav Daniel is saying is that it's very important to always try to get people to say Amen. The Koyach of Amen is... Right? Um... Kind of, it's like you're talking to Hashem, but you're kind of declaring it to the world. But if there's no one here to hear you and affirm it, so it's lacking in the whole praise. It's mutter. 100%. It is, but it's not nearly... It's like you're coming with the most beautiful poem yeah. to, to a king. Yeah. And the king's so excited, everybody's waiting there to listen to it. And you say, no, 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 everybody out, 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 out. The guard's out. I'll tell it to the king privately. So it's still very beautiful and great, and you could do it, but it's lacking the whole, if you can imagine everybody roars, amen, afterwards. That's, uh, okay. Turn around, Shem and Ma'akim Tabrocha. Divri Rabbi Zilai. The oil that they would, you know, smear to clean their hands from all the zuama after Mayim Achroinim, that you're not allowed to make Birkas Amazon until you bring it. Because you have to have that cleanliness for, to, 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 for Kedusha, to be able to say Birkat Amazon. Rashi says, by the way, that another thing, Ma'akev Sabracha means it stops. You, as long as you haven't put the oil on, then the desserts are not part of the desserts yet. He says, and therefore you don't have to make a bracha before them because they're part of the Suda. That's another translation of Ma'akiv's bracha according to Rashi. These are the words of Rabbi Zilai. Rabbi Zivai Oimer, Eino Ma'akiv. No, you can say Birchas HaMazoin. You're ready for Birchas HaMazoin even without oil. Rabbi Achai Oimer, Shem and Toiv, a very good oil, which means a fragrant oil, Ma'akiv. That is actually um, someone that's accustomed to anoint himself with that. Rashi says, the Misha Ragul boy. So then, that, that actually is essential for Begatam Zahra. Rabbi Zuh, my Omer Keshem Shem is Zuham. Pasul Avoda, Kach Yadayim Zuhamot, Pasulot Levracha. Just like someone that has a very bad smell. He's very sweaty and he smells, he has a very, he has a bad odor. There are some people that have that problem. He's not allowed to do the Avodah in the Beit HaMikdash. So too, if a person has the, the hands that are smelly from eating, he cannot say a bracha. I don't know from Ziloi, Zivoi, and Zumoi. That's the names of the Amaroi that we just mentioned. I know a brighter. That's what I know. Okay. Was the oil that, I'm sorry, Robert, the oil they're using, is it good oil or not? I don't understand. They said, put oil, you shouldn't say the... If you're accustomed to putting on this fragrant oil... It smells good. Yeah, but people would also put it, would, would, would clean and take away all the smelly parts of your hand from eating so much, they would eat with their hands a lot. 
and, and, and then it also puts its fragrance, and that's what you're used to doing. That's the way you end your meal every time. Bring the oil. Then, as long as you haven't done it, you can't make the Birkas Muslim. Because okay. your hands are not clean. Correct. Exactly. Oh, thank you so much. How do you know I need another one? You talk a lot. I talk a lot. That's good. It's the only time I wouldn't be insulted if someone tells me that. When Torah, the Gemara says, "My The Gemara says, "Right, What is the what is the crap? What is the profession of a person on this world? You know the Gemara. What profession should everybody take? It's for everyone. So yase atzma ki'ile. Gemara brings a pasuk. Make yourself mute. Don't talk. That, that's a profession, by the way, because. Almost nobody, it's one of the hardest, it's the hardest profession. It's almost nobody that could do it. Right? That's what the Gemara says. The Gemara says, um, I would think even in Torah, okay, you think a lot of Torah, but you don't have to talk and talk and talk and talk Torah. Talmud loimar tzedek tidaberum. Righteousness speak. Speak and speak and speak and speak. Don't ever be mute when it comes to Torah. So when a guy says you talk a lot, if it's Torah, I'm, I'm not insulted. Okay. But I have I, I, just for, for the share, Baruch Hashem, I have I talk more, more Torah the rest of the day. Okay. What's the brightest say? There's a whole bunch of different gears here of what the right Pasuk is. So, um, let's go with the Vilna Goyen over here. He says that last pasuk in Shmini, which is really like this: "Ki ani Hashem aloykechem, v'iskadishtem v'yistem kedoshim." So, so v'iskadishtem elumayim rishonim. Sanctify yourselves. That's when you wash your bread. V'yitem kedoshim elumayim achronim. And then, Kikadosh, Ani, Kikadosh, by the way, the way the Vilna Goyen is Kikadosh. This is a Shem Atov. That's not only the Mayim but it's the oil. Okay? And Ani, there is no Ani Hashem Lekechem, because the Ani Hashem Lekechem was at the beginning of the Pasuk, according to the Vilna Goyen's Pasuk. Zubracha. That is the Birchas HaMazo in. So therefore, it's showing you that you should wash your hands before, after, oils, and Bikat Amazon. Today we don't do oil because that's not our minig. Hadana Allah, Elu Dvarim, Mazal Tov, Haroya, Zoktehel Gimishna, Haroya, Makim Shenasa, Ben Nisim, Yisrael, Oymer, Baruch Shos, and Yisrael, Avisim, and Makim Azeb. If someone sees, now we're going to talk about Bikat HaShevach, Bikat HaHodah, Baruch of thanks, not of pleasure, of benefit, and and uh, it says like this. If someone sees uh, a place where miracles happen to the, for the Jews, he says, Baruch she'asani sim. Most places can say it means with Atah Hashem and the Kedem Elchayim because a brach is not a brach unless you say Hashem, Hashem, and Malchut. She'asani sim avotin ba makom azde. Okay? Makom sheneka mimeno avodat kochavim. A place where the Id- idols were uprooted. Omer Baruch, she'akar avodat kochavim me'atzenu. Baruch atah Hashem l'chenu chalam, she'akar avodat that uprooted the service of kochavim from our land. Now, ala zikin, which are like uh, shooting stars, ala zva'ot, earthquakes, ve'ala hare amim, on the thunder, strong winds like hurricanes, tornadoes, and on the lightning, Omer Baruch Shekoho Ugvurato Male Olam. Because they're seen from very far away, they're felt. They fill the world. Your koach and your might fill the world. Mountains, and extremely high mountains. Um, 
like, you know, the Alps and the uh, Mount Everest and all those. Oceans and rivers and deserts, very large rivers. Okay, the rivers that are mentioned in the Torah and Bereshit. Those you say, Baruch Osev Reshit. Baruch Osev Reshit. Have you done Meharo et Hayam Agadol, Omer, Baruch Shasta et Hayam Agadol? Baruch Atta Hashem, the Kerem that made the great Yam. Now, what is the great Yam? Where is that great Yam? We'll see later on, Bezrat Hashem, Hadafnut Tes. Bizman Shero El Ifrakim. That's only when you see it once in a while. Okay? But if you see it all the time, then there's no chidush for you. It's not like, oh, wow, and amazing. However, when it comes to lightning and, and thunder and all those things, we say them all the time, as long as it's not in the same rainstorm. But even the same rainstorm, if it didn't clear up the clouds, but it's already the next day, you also make again. But in the same day, you don't. But otherwise... Let's say it's, I saw a rainstorm today, then it cleared up, and then tomorrow is another rainstorm, like in the, like in the summer over here. So you have to make it again. Why? It's, it's, it's not every 30 days. The answer is, but it's a brand new lightning. Today's lightning is not yesterday's. When you see these mountains, or these rivers, or these oceans, it's the same one. So if, I haven't seen it, if I've seen it in the last 30 days, it's not like wow for me, and therefore it doesn't um, require a bracha. Okay? On the rains and on good news, you say Baruch Atov Hametiv. We'll, we'll talk about that later. On bad tidings, Oime Baruch Dayan Haomet. Bana Bait Chadash. Okay? If he builds a brand new house, or he buys new vessels. Um. Some say even a car. Thank you, Hashem, that you made us live, and you sustained us, and you brought us to this moment. You make Dayana Ahmed on something that's bad now, even if there's something good that might come out of it soon. We'll see soon what that is. We make Hatov on something that's very special now, even if it might come with some problems later, but since they're not clear, therefore we ignore the future, and therefore, we just look at it what it is now. Anybody who cries about something that already happened, that's a prayer that's for nothing. It's done already. For example, Let it be your will that my wife gives birth to a Zachar. <laughs> that, that's not worth anything. It's, it is already what it is. You don't pray for a miracle. You're going, you hear screaming in the way, in the city. I hope that, uh, let that not be in my home. Because if it's not in his home, it's not in his home. If it is in his home, it is. So what should he pray? He should pray that whoever's home it is, or if it's in his home, should be saved from that. Okay? But he, he shouldn't uh, pray that it shouldn't be in his home, because it is what it is already. When you enter a city, meaning, you're entering a place where there are very um, powerful people, who may cause a lot of problems for other people, and so it's dangerous to enter this place. You pray twice. When you enter, you pray that you should enter in peace. And when you exit, you exit, you should exit in peace. Um, according to the Rambam, the exit prayer is not a prayer that you should, but rather a praise that you have exited in peace. Two entering and two going out, meaning... One before you enter, please let me enter in peace. And when you come in, thank you that I came in in peace. And then before you leave, you ask Hashem that you should exit in peace. And when you leave, you thank Him. And that's how, what I just explained. You say, on what happened, 
and you scream to Hashem for the future. The, the, the Ramam learns this part of the Mishnah goes on, on, on all moments of a person's life. A person should always be screaming for the future, asking, talking to Hashem, begging Him for the future, and always thanking Him for the past. It's a Rambam, not a Nachman. It's a Mishnah, according to the Rambam. Uh, yeah? A person is to make a bracha on the bad in the same way that he makes a bracha on the Tova. What is Bechal of Avcha? B'shnei Yitzarecha, with both inclinations. B'yetzer Tov, u'v'yetzer Ara. Okay? What does that mean with Yetzer Tov and the Yetzer Ara? Um, the Rebbe Niyayinah says you could sometimes be cruel against Rishayim. Other Pshatim are that That he uses the, his bodily needs, meaning anything he needs for his body. He does them in a way that's just for Avodat Hashem. That's using the Tavot of eating for Hashem. That's, one, that's, that's one, another pshat. Uvichol nafshecha means afilu hu I'm ready to give up my life, akidu shemo, and I won't do Avodah Zarah or anything, even if they force me. Uvichol meodecha. Meaning, with every great thing, in my, meaning with all my money. This is what the Gemara is trying to bring out. Anything that he meets out for you, any measurement, you thank him, whether it's good or you th- it's bad, have a model or thank him. When a person standing by the eastern wall of the Harabayit, so what's open in front of that eastern wall, directly, right, aligned with that that open entrance, is the entrance to the Ezrat Yisrael, which is with the entrance to Ezrat Nashim, and the entrance of the Ulam, the antechamber, and the Heichel, the inside, till the Kodshe Kadoshim. And therefore, A person has to be careful not to be lightheaded. A person shouldn't walk in to the Arabayit with his stick, the shoes, and with his money belt. And with the, with the sand on his feet, and he shouldn't use it as a shortcut. And a rakiko is also spitting on the Harbayit, because it's much worse than wearing shoes. So, Kavachomer, you can't spit. When they would end all the brachot of the Beit HaMikdash, they would end them like this. Amazing. They would say the full bracha. Okay? And then they would say, Baruch Atah Hashem Instead of saying, Baruch, and then Baruch Honen Adat. Instead of just saying, Baruch Atah Hashem Honen Adat, they would say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Elokei Yisrael, Ad Olam Baruch Honen Adat. Mishikilkelu tatstukim ve'omru omru, ve'omru en olam ela echod, chas v'shalom. They said there's only one world, hitkinu shi omrim, min ha'olam ve'ad ha'olam. They said, no, you say, Baruch Atah Hashem Elokei Yisrael, min ha'olam ve'ad ha'olam. So that you should be mechazek your emunah in the next world as well against the death of the tztukim. They also made another takana uh, to strengthen a person's emunah in a Kadosh Baruch That when a person greets his friend, he should use the name of Hashem. And that's not shaming Hashem, using it. Why? Because we learn from Boaz Another place, by Gidon, the Omer, the Malach told him, Hashem imcha gibor hechayel. The Omer, it says in Mishlei, the Altavuz kizakna imecha. Don't shame, don't make fun 
on the minagim and the takanot of, of the old, your, your forefathers. Learn from them. Just like we see from Boaz and Gidon, learn from them. The Omer et la sot la shemi fer to artecha. And it, meaning, uh, there's a time to do for Hashem, they nullified your Torah. Okay? The simple pshat in the Pasuk is, when the Rishayim try to nullify your Torah, that's a time to stand up for Hashem. But Rabbi Natan, Omer, he would expound the Pasuk as follows. Sometimes you're allowed to nullify the Torah, and do something that seemingly seems against the Torah, right? But it's for the sake of Hashem. And what's that? Therefore, even though a little bit when you say Hashem to a person, Hashem imcha, you're using Hashem's name, you're saying, you're saying Hashem's name, the real name of Hashem. It seems like you're, you're, che- you're treating it cheaply just to greet your friend. The Chacham said, do it, as we see from Boaz. Because there's a great Indian in, 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 in pursuing peace with your friend, Bakesh Shalom Verat Feyu. And that's what they were masaking. Menani Mili. Let's get, let's just go a little bit quick. Drop more. Menani Mili. I'm going to be echad into Oma Kro. What do you mean, Menani Mili? How do we know that we make it the first bracha of the Mishnah that said, Haro em makom she nasu bo nisim li Yisrael, omer baruch she asta nisim la vatenu ba so how do you know that we make a bracha on an ace? Amr Abiyach Dama Kro, Vayoyim Yitro, Baruch Hashem Asher Yitzil. He gave a bracha to Hashem that he saved you from Mitzrayim and Miyad Pare. Anisad Rab Mevachin, Anisad Yochel, Loi Mevachinon. So it sounds like the Mishnah said that Mokav Shinas we need him to to everybody. Only, but it sounds like if you had your own private nace, or there was a nace, right? You don't make a bracha. There was a person that was traveling in Avayimina. What's that? That's a region that's south of the Euphrates River. A lion attacked him. A miracle happened. He was saved. Whenever you get to that spot, say Baruch. Another story. He was walking in the valleys of Aravot, a place with Tzchalamaya, he was very thirsty. Tavadei Nisa, a miracle happened. Suddenly a spring of water was created for him. He drank. But another time, he's walking in the <coughs> market of Mechuzah, when he found a gamble pizza. A crazy camel fell on him. It parked Ashita. Suddenly, the al um, the house, the, the wall of the house adjacent to him, basically fell next to him, and he was able to go into that house and get saved. When he got there, he said, Baruch, Baruch Baravot of Gamal. He made me a miracle by Aravot with the water and the Gamal. Baruch, Baruch Meaning, wherever he was, wherever that, he's, he mentioned that first. But, um, the question is why is he making a bracha on the other nations? It didn't happen here. It's a good child. Tosh Rosh deals with it. But anyways, you see that you make a bracha on a yochid. Ami anisa deram kuliyamu mechaiv levruche. Anisa de yochid iu chayiv levruche. Everyone is mechayiv to make for the miracles that happened to all the Jews. But, on a, on a miracle that is private, and only the person that experienced it, he makes that bracha. If you see the place where the Jews passed, crossed, in the river, in the Yamsuf, or they crossed, the Yadin is also split by Yoshua. Or they walked between the rivers, the canals of Arnon, and um, remember what happened over there? We'll see in a minute. Avnel Gavish b'moret Beit Choron ve'Evan shebikesh to Zokar Og Melch Habashan Yisrael, or the stones of El Gavish in Morad Beit Choron. We'll see, and the stone that Og Melch Habashan wanted to throw on the Jews. Ve'Evan sheyashav le Moshe b'shasha asa Yeshua mechal ba'malek. V'ishto shalot, or the wife of Lot, the pillar. 
the chomati richo she nivla abim koma, or the wall of your that got swallowed. Al kulon tzorch shiutin adol v'shevach lefnei mokim. You have to say the same brach of shalos anisim. Bishlam and Mabrot Hayom, I understand. Create the absolute dichtiv vayav over Eisel b'tochayam v'yabasha. Mabrot Hayadin is a great miracle. Dichtiv vayam do akorim nos teyarim brit Hashem becharavah. They stood on dry land in the middle of the river b'tochayadin. Hachen v'chol Yisrael. Um, Avrim becharavah she had to tam kol agud avot hayadin. Elo Mabrot nach leyarnon menolin. What is that? They walk through these little rivers of Arnon. What's what's the miracle that happened? The Pasuk says that Bilam said this. Tana, it vahev besufa means like this. Shnei mitzoroim. There were two guys, one named Et and one name was Hev. Et and Hev besufa. But they had Sarat. So they were kicked out of the camp. They were traveling behind the Machne Yisrael. And they got, um, so when Klai Yisrael, before they got to Nach Le'anon, Atu Emoroi, the Emoroim came, Avdiloi Nikrisi V'toshuvahim. They made like caves inside the mountain side and the hidden side, Amri Kichofi Yisrael Hocha, Niktalinun, were going to kill them. When they, when they cross through this narrow area between the two mountains, we'll throw rocks, stones, and they'll, and they'll, just all, they'll trample on each other. They'll all die. For lo haviyadi, they didn't know the orin have a mask kamay the Yisrael. That the orin of Hashem was traveling before Klai Yisrael. Always, it was always three days ahead. The have mimichluhu turi mikamayu. And it always flattened out all the mountains. Kime da'ata aron, when the Oren came, it started flattening out the mountains. What it did was, it brought this mountain next to this mountain. Bikatlinun. And what happened was, that the, the, all, these, like, all these holes that they made at this side, there was like rocks and boulders that came and fit in, like a, like a, like a plug, like an outlet. And it just crushed them. And all the blood came out. The Nacha Damayu, it flowed the Nacha Arnon into the river. Ki Otu et Vahev. When Et Vahev, Et and Hev came, they saw Chazu, the Dom of the Kanafik Meni too, they saw blood. So, Atu Omru, they said, Lehuli Yisrael. They told Klai Yisrael about the great miracle. Omru Shira, and they said, Shira, Haino Dechtiv, the Eshad and Echalim Hashem Natal Shevet Av, and Ishan Legvul Ma'av. Which means, the Midron of the Nechalim, the slope that goes to the Moshav Ar, near the Samuch of Gvul Ma'av, was flowing from the blood of the Emorim. What's Avnei Gavish? My Avnei Gavish, Tana, it's really an acronym for Al Gav Ish. Avanim Sham do Al Gav Ish, for a man. The Yordu Al Gav Ish, just this little last piece of Gemara, and we'll stop here. These are stones that stood in, this, in the ear for the man. The Yordu Al Gav Ish, and then they came down later for another man. What's that? Amdu al gav ish ze Moshe dechtiv ha ish Moshe anav meod. He's called ish. Uchtiv after he lifted up his hands in prayer by barad. It says vayachtelu ha kolot vha barad umata lo nitach arza. Meaning, everything stopped and the barad, the great massive boulders of of barad with fire, they stayed in the air. They didn't come down, so they just stayed hanging, right? Yadu al gav ish, but they came after it later. Zei Yoshu dechtiv kachel et Yoshu binun ish asher rachbo. Uchtiv, so he's also called ish. Uchtiv, and it says vayi binu sam mipnei Yisrael. Hey, memorad beit choron vaHashem ishtich aleim. When the Emorim were fighting with them in beit choron, Hashem threw upon them avonim gedolot. These were the avonim gedolot of Moshe Rabbeinu's time of the Barat. So that is an amazing nice, and we have to say Baruch Shas Tanisim. Chazak Baruch. Ходишь, что